Hi, this is Colin from Mailshake. In this video, we'll walk through the process of creating a Mailshake campaign for a crowdfunding project that wants to do some outreach. The first thing we need to do is connect a Google account. You can send from any Gmail or G Suite account. If you want to send from other services, you can do it as long as you've created an alias for that address within your Gmail account. Before we start our first campaign, let's jump into Google Sheets to demonstrate how to create a recipient list. The email address field is required, and anything else can be used as text replacements. So we'll have company as our example. We'll export our spreadsheet to a CSV file, and then switch back over to Mailshake. To start a campaign, we'll click the big plus sign. We'll give our campaign a title and choose the Google account we'd like to send from. We'll find our CSV file and tell Mailshake where the email and name columns are. Now it's time for the fun part. For our example, we'll pretend to be running a crowdfunding campaign for a frisbee catching drone that we're hoping to get on the shelves of some toy shops. I've got a pre-written email I'll paste in here. You can use any column in your CSV file as a text replacement. So in this case, we're using company. You can use the insert dropdown to just, uh, or you can just add curly braces around the name of the column in your file. When we connected our Google account, I went ahead and set up a basic signature, so there's no need to add it here. In these days of busy inboxes, adding automatic follow-ups is a crucial step. We'll add a reply to this three days later. And then four days after that, we'll have one more go out. You can always pause a recipient yourself, but if at any point the recipient replies, Mailshake will automatically stop these follow-ups from continuing. Drip emails are useful if you want an email to go out even if the recipient replies. One example of this might be useful is an educational campaign that sends out new info each week but we don't really have that for this one, so we're going to skip that. Let's do have an email go out when someone clicks the link to our crowdfunding page. In our example, this is just going to be a sample link, google.com. And we'll have it go out one day after they click it. Here's one really important note. Tracking links is really powerful, but it can also affect your spam rate. If you're going to track clicks, we highly recommend going into your team settings and hooking up your own tracking domain. This requires a bit of technical knowledge of DNS records. On the next step, we can preview how every single email will look and make any adjustments. These are the final emails with all the text replacements filled and signatures in place. Once you make an edit here, the email will no longer be updated if you make changes to that template we were just looking at. Once you've made any tweaks you like, the next step will be some final options you can consider. You can schedule when this campaign goes out, and you can tweak how Lead Catcher works. By default, Lead Catcher catches replies and puts them all in one place so you can efficiently do personal follow ups. Now we'll send our campaign and see a calendar of the scheduled sends. To see the sending calendar for all your campaigns, just click here. And here's where you can tweak how your schedule works by specifying what days you can send on, what time frame of each day, max number of emails, and among other things. Once your campaign starts to send, you'll be able to view statistics and recent activity. You can view the upcoming sends for this uh, campaign or you can view the high-level statistics here and drill down with these drop-down lists, or you can click on any of the recent activities. Let's take a look at our replies. Here in the recipient list, we can view a recipient's entire history. And since this person is a lead, we can actually reply back, assign the lead, or mark it as closed.
The Pending Messages tab will show you any messages in your campaign that haven't been sent yet to this person. Since this recipient replied back, the campaign follow-ups have already been halted, but our on-click message might still get sent. After a round of recipients has gone through your campaign, you might want to make tweaks to your email content. Just edit your messages and they'll be ready for the next list of recipients that you drop in. You can even add new follow-ups or change the timing. Uh, it's a good thing to remember though that when you do this, new, when you set up new follow-ups, existing recipients can be affected and may receive those, those follow-ups. After you've received a few replies, click over to Lead Catcher to work through them one by one. Your open leads are shown with the oldest first. Clicking on one shows the full history for that recipient and gives you some options for how to handle the lead. So here's one that we're going to ignore. Here's one that looks pretty good, but it's there's someone else on our team that would be better suited to respond to this. So we'll assign this to Kelly. Okay, here's a pretty solid lead that we want to reply to. We'll send that lead and mark it closed. If the recipient responds back, the lead will get reopened so we never lose track of it. Before we go, I'll share a few more tips. You can pause any campaign, any message, any recipient, or even a specific message for a recipient. You can export one or more campaigns to a CSV file, and you can duplicate a campaign. Duplicating copies everything except for the recipients, so it's great if you have a nice campaign set up, but you want to tweak it for a different audience. We catch unsubscribes by listening to replies from your recipients that have the words unsubscribe or remove me or similar. You can also man manually manage these unsubscribes with this link in the sidebar. That's it for now. Happy mail shaking and thanks for watching.